Hello and welcome to the G0 OZS radio channel. Today's video covers the Soviet R123, so written like a letter P-123, known in as Magnolia, as many Soviet sets were known after different kinds of flowers. R123 is a mobile VHF transceiver covering 20 to 52 megacycles. Uh, at about 25 to 30 watts. The Soviet R123 and R123M, the M stands for modernized, also known as Magnolia, are FM vehicle mounted transceivers covering the range of 20 to 52 megahertz which was the entire eastern block vhf low band at an output power of 25 to 30 watts they were installed mostly in armored vehicles tanks such as the t64 and t72 and in armored personnel carriers and reconnaissance vehicles such as the btr60 and BRDM. The radios were used for communication between vehicles up to headquarters and for communication with dismounted infantry using portable transceivers that covered various subsets of the band. The radios could be used with a whip antenna on the tank uh, but they have a coaxial connector so it can be easily matched to just about any 50 or 75 ohm antenna. The radios entered service in the mid-1960s and continued in widespread use until the end of the Cold War and somewhat beyond in countries that received Soviet military vehicles as exports. Mine came from Poland in 2017 and uh, worked straight out of the box. So uh, I'm very, very pleased with it. I've used it mostly for local FM nets on 10 meters, uh, but it certainly works well for receiving DX on 10 FM I think it's possibly a little wide and of course it doesn't do split frequencies needed for 10 meter repeaters so I've not yet managed to work any DX with it. It is a hybrid design. All of the major functioning parts are vacuum tube technology, a mixture of miniature and standard glass envelope valves. The power supply and some small parts of the audio circuitry are transistorized using germanium transistors. Uh, I'm wearing the audio equipment that came with my set, which is a Soviet tank helmet. There is a laryngophone or throat microphone under my chin, uh, which is held in place by the ear flaps. If you don't button, buckle those up, it doesn't work very well, as I've found. Uh, that is connected to a, to a snatch connector to a microphone PTT unit, not that unlike the ones for the British Klansman sets. The bottom piece is the intercom PTT for the tank and I don't have the R124 intercom unit that is the partner to this set. The top part is the radio PTT and I've connected the radio to a dummy load and you will hear the power supply wailing when I press it uh, and possibly hear the I hear the side tone you probably won't on the recording. So turning to the radio itself. Turning now to the radio itself, the power supply is a transistorized unit uh, called the B26. Uh, it takes DC power in on two screw terminals, one for 
earth one for the actual 24 volt power that has an insulated knob and there is a multi-pin I think if from memory 12 pin output connector to an armoured cable to the radio itself with fuses for the main power supplies uh, there are quite a lot of different voltages to the set including 600 250 volts needed for transmit uh, 600 there are two input fuses in the middle for, uh, there's a 600 volt fuse sorry for the output and a 28 volt input fuse and then a 150 volt fuse at the bottom and I'll just hover over the label my radio is I think of Polish origin judging by the writing but the some of the labels are, are in Cyrillic some of them are in a Slavic alphabet so now trying to move across the radio on the extreme right hand side we have an indicator when it is using the memory channels a panel meter uh, which is used for tuning and to check the various supply voltages and a band indicator so one is the low band 20 to 30 something megacycles two is the high band uh, 30 something to 52 megacycles the bottom knob here is the volume control and we'll see again it has its factory label which is in Russian but all of the control labels are in the language of the country of use they were even made with English labels for export to the Middle East the band switch is the next thing we see moving across slightly to the left at the bottom that has free tuning on the two bottom positions on each band and it has two memory positions on each band and we'll come back to the memory in a few minutes and then the top part is the antenna tuner the antenna tuner is a multi-turn control the red collar locks it in place the there is a handle that you can pop out or flip out to actually tune with and there is a lamp which measures the antenna current in real time and is actually much more convenient for tuning than the meter uh, the power supply squeals on transmit so you could also can rely on the note of the power supply as a proxy for the antenna current uh, which is nearly as good as a lamp in my opinion uh, and then moving a little further across we have the main tuning display uh, which you can only really see in the dark it's a backlit projection display uh, with two scales for the higher and lower band because of the internal design of the set it, uh, one scale reads in the opposite direction to the other uh, and it has markings at 100 kilohertz and 50 kilohertz intervals and it is fairly easy to net to a, a station there are also four calibration marks uh, two on each band where you can align it to a crystal calibrator or use it and these that screw on the left of the display is used to align the scale to the calibrator uh, the cover in the middle of the set is the cover for the tuning me mechanical tuning control uh, so if we open that you'll see that there are four screws when the screws are aligned with the circle so going round it rather than across it the memory is set if you turn them a uh, quarter turn to be across the circle then the settings of the tuning controls are captured in you can t adjust the antenna tuner and the frequency tuning get the radio to work on the frequency of your choice and then turn the while the memory switch is in the right position and you can then rotate the 
the screw a quarter turn anti-clockwise back in line like you see it now and that will uh, store the settings of the frequency dial and or frequency control and the antenna tuning control uh, as far as I can understand that is done by variable resistor preset variable resistors and it uses a servo mechanism and motors to drive the controls to the remembered position when you select one of the memories. Uh, moving now further to the left we ha have a transmit or receiver or, tr or transceiver or receive only switch so what is shown as simplex is the transmit receive enable naslok or however it is pronounced in polish is receive only uh, and then the main tuning control uh, with a calibration adjustment underneath it is the knob underneath uh, and that is linked to the dial that I will have to turn off the lights and record later. Below that you have the microphone connector or the headset connector and on the extreme left of the set you have the power input connector connected to the armor from the armored cable. There are three switches the rightmost is the power control so that is power that turns on and off the calibrator the rightmost switch controls the light for the frequency dial the meter switch selects the various voltages on this side only on trans present on transmit on this side on receive and there are two scales for antenna current normally you set it up on antenna current one change to probably less sensitive so that you can peak it higher uh, and then the control at the extreme top left is the squelch control which semi somewhat works. Uh, what I have found is if you have large aerials for 10 FM, uh, the background, the band noise is sufficient to open the squelch in any position. Right now, connected to a dummy load, it's working fine. So next, we're going to have a look at the memory in operation. Now we're going to have a look at the memory. I've t opened the cover of the memory uh, system so you can see it. Uh, what I'm going to do is change the master switch from free tuning on band one to a memory position number one. Uh, I'm going to also reduce the backlighting a bit so we can see the indicator lamps. So when I turn the dial, you'll see none of the indicator lamps are lit at the moment. When I turn the dial, which is quite hard work, you'll see that the controls were turning. Uh, I was focused on the antenna tuner. Uh, you will also, if I turn to another memory channel, see the frequency control turning and the memory disk turning. So it's all rather spooky. It's all rather spooky, but it does work and the resetting accuracy is very, very good. Uh, and what you'll see now as well if I change, because I've now selected memory number two, that the lamp number two is lit. So normally, I guess the original owners would have set up the frequencies of the day ahead of time, and they could then just turn the memory switch to get where they wanted to go without any great amount of adjustment. Uh, 
and while I've got the lights off you can now see the tuning dial and if I go back to number one you'll see that zooming past until it resets and that one is set at about 29.15 we'll go back to number two let it zoom around and try to get it to Show the numbers in the top row. For some reason this one doesn't do very well on the top row. It's now on 29.7 uh, and we'll switch it back to number one. And we're exactly back where we were again at 29. Actually, the line is at 29.15, sort of between 29. Point two. And well, you can't see it very well, 29.1. Now we're going to cover how to operate the set. So first thing we have to do is to set the frequency. Uh, or well, first of all, set it to free tuning on the band of our choice. So we want to be on 29 for 10 FM. Uh, check that it's on the right band. Set the frequency using the frequency dial. Uh, and I don't think you can really see it with enough light to get a picture of the rest of the set but that is on about 29150 connected to the dummy load and then the next stage uh, is to key the transmitter you'll probably not see a lot of light in the tuning LED or tuning lamp at this point you'll not see a lot of power coming out so what we now have to do uh, and I'm gonna have to change my grip so there'll be a short break and I'll start recording again uh, so that I can use both hands uh, and we will adjust the antenna tuner to get a louder whine a nice pink illumination or in the or reddish pink illumination in the lamp uh, and plenty of power in the meter. So that's 10 by 1. Okay, so now we're transmitting again. So what I'm going to do is turn the dial. You'll hear the pitch of the tone increase. You'll see the light glow and we're now if I can deal with the reflections at about max, getting close to maximum power, it is quite touchy. So that's it now set up to what I know is the maximum power. The SWR is very reasonable and we have just under 30 watts coming out of FM coming out of the radio. Uh, so that's the basic operating technique for the radio. Uh, there are a couple of other things to look at before we finish. The check meter is for all of the supply voltages received down this side, transmit down this side, and these are the two antenna current settings at the top. So if we turn to look at the meter, I'll just read off the numbers from here, so because I can't film both of them at a, a sufficient scale. Uh, so there's the meter. So we're now looking at two volts. 
6.3 volts and 150 volts in every case the a good reading is somewhere in the black part of the meter scale so I'll go back to where I normally leave it on antenna current uh, and finally to demonstrate the squelch and volume controls the squelch control you turn anti-clockwise to open and hopefully you can hear the hiss from the headphones and the volume control at bottom right is turned clockwise to make louder turn anti-clockwise to make quieter Uh, and finally a quick look at the headgear so the headgear is kind of like a bicycle helmet with ridges on the top uh, to protect the operator from banging their head on the inside of the vehicle there's two uh, earphones inside two uh, throat microphone elements that strap under your chin. Uh, they seem to work best at the point where your neck sort of turns to go under your chin, sort of the joint between neck and chin. Uh, and those are connected with a leather strap. And the leather strap has a kind of a metal clamp on it that you slide up to lock it. So you squeeze the, uh, I'm not doing very well, but you basically push it up the straps until it is tight. You will then find it won't go back down. And if you haven't met one of these before, the trick to releasing it is to press in on the buttons either side, at which point you can then pull it back down very easily. I, I had a small uh, moment of panic the first time I tried this because I didn't know that and couldn't get it off. Uh, Nokia's B, Nokia's B, uh, Infinite 
Infinite, Infinite Signal <ríe> Al final de todo, ok? 73 Dennis Thank you very much for watching I hope you enjoyed the video Please do click subscribe if you want to see the next one when and where it turns up uh, and 73s for now from G0 OZS.